You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I'm going to follow another suggestion that a friend of mine made. I'm going to make bread today, but he suggested doing a rye bread, but not a standard rye bread. He suggested doing a marbled rye. And what you do with a marbled rye is you work with two different colors of rye flour. Light rye flour, which is made just from the inner part of the rye berry, and then dark rye flour, which has the husk, the bran, rather, on the outside. Try and find both kinds of flour. They're available online, but I could only find dark rye flour, so I'm going to substitute, but it'll work fine. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. The big substitute that I want to do today is for the liquid. To make two one pound loaves you normally use two and a half cups which is 590 milliliters of water. If I can substitute something else for the water, something that'll add some flavor, that's what I do. So I'm going to use two and a half cups of liquid, but what I'm going to use is a bottle of beer, that's a cup and a half of liquid, and then I'm going to use one cup of potato water. You can see this whitish part down in the bottom. That's all potato starch. I save the water when I boil potatoes, like for making mashed potatoes, especially if I can use the water twice, like I do often when I'm going to be cooking up a lot of potatoes. And then I put that potato water in one cup containers, freeze it, pop them out of the containers, and then put them in Ziploc bags in the freezer. What that does is it adds more starch to the bread dough. And especially when working with something like whole wheat bread, that extra starch will make the bread tender and it's less likely to crumble. Whole wheat bread crumbles rather easily. So that's what I'm going to do today. And my friend made a second suggestion and I'm going to save that for the end because that's going to be something special. So let's start making marbled rye bread. First thing I want to do here is warm my liquid. This beer has been open for a while. I've been letting it go flat. You don't have to do that. It just to me it makes less of a mess if I don't have a whole lot of foam. So there's my beer and my potato water. I'm going to put this in the microwave and bring this up to about 105 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 41 to 46 degrees Celsius. You don't need to heat the liquid up if you don't want to. By having a warm liquid it'll help the yeast to be more active. It likes a warm environment in which to ferment the sugars and starches in the dough. If you wanted to you could refrigerate the dough and let it rise very slowly overnight. It gives it a slightly different and some say a slightly better flavor. I prefer to work with a warm liquid when I'm making bread. My liquid is warm here now. And then I want to putting that in a mixer bowl because I'm going to be doing all of this with my stand mixer. I have here some yeast. You need about a packet of yeast, which is two and a half, two and a quarter rather teaspoons. This, you can use instant yeast or active dry. This happens to be active dry. And then I'm going to add just like a pinch of sugar to this from my supply of sugar over here. I don't know that if I need the sugar because there's enough starch in here that should get the yeast activated. Stir all that together and then I'm going to wait and I want to see if I get some foaming on the top of the surface of this liquid. That'll tell me after a few minutes, if it foams, that the yeast is alive and vital, which will give me the rising I want in my bread. If your yeast never foams, check the expiration date. It might be past the expiration date, in which case you just have to buy new yeast. My yeast now is foaming nicely on the surface. That's an indication that all is well. So now I'm going to add to this three tablespoons of vegetable oil. That's corn oil. You could also add butter if you want to. I do that often when I'm making bread. 
And then I have here four cups, which by weight is 20 ounces, 567 grams of bread flour. And this isn't quite enough flour yet. This is going to make a wet batter, a sponge. And then two tablespoons of sugar. If you wanted to, you could reduce this down to one tablespoon. Not sure how sweet that's going to be. Two tablespoons should be okay. Start stirring that in. And then I'm going to add one tablespoon of salt. And then stir this in to make a sponge. They call this a sponge. It's a wet batter. I'm going to be using this to make my two different colored doughs. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes to finish activating that yeast. Then I'm going to divide this in half and then add my other flowers to make my two different colors of dough. I have in the meantime divided my batter between two bowls. I did this by weighing it. You could do it by doing it by volume. I wanted to get an equal amount of dough in each bowl and now I'm going to begin adding my rye flour. This is dark rye flour. So I'm going to put that into one bowl and because I could not find light rye flour I'm going to use whole wheat flour. It has a light brown color. It'll give me the light color that I need for my two breads. Now one thing you can do to darken the dark rye flour even more is you can add some instant coffee or in my case I'm adding some cocoa powder. Oh and as far as how much flour is in each of these I put in five and a third cups which is five and a third ounces five and one third ounces one and a third cup 150 grams of each the whole wheat flour and the dark rye flour and this is two tablespoons of cocoa powder. The cocoa powder is going to darken that bread dough a little bit but it's not enough to give me a chocolatey flavor to the dough. You could use if you wanted to instant coffee or you could leave it out altogether and just have a lighter brown color. A lot of recipes that I've seen for marbled rye use cocoa powder or instant coffee to darken the dark rye bread dough. Now optionally I have some vital wheat gluten. One of the problems especially with rye flour is there isn't a lot of gluten in the flour. There's more gluten in the whole wheat flour. So I'm going to add a little bit of vital wheat gluten. What this is is it's it's flour wheat protein and it'll increase the glutens. I'll get more rise out of the bread. So I'm going to add about a tablespoon to this one and maybe half a tablespoon to this one. Again because the whole wheat flour has more gluten. So I'm going to double up on the rye flour adding twice as much vital wheat gluten. That's optional. Most stores now I'm seeing sell vital wheat gluten but I got to tell you it's a little expensive. So I'm going to mix these together until they're ready to knead. I'm going to move this one to my stand mixer and let my stand mixer knead this dough. But this dough I'm going to do by hand because I only have one stand mixer. And then one more thing I want to add is I have here four teaspoons of caraway seeds and I'm going to put about half in each of these, divide them up. Caraway seeds work nicely in rye bread. Okay, this is looking pretty good. That's dry enough. 
is obviously some flour in the bottom. But I can move this to my stand mixer. And while that's kneading this dough, I'm going to combine this by hand. I've been kneading this dough, and it's a bit sticky, as you can see right there. And so far, this is looking pretty good. It's not overly moist. Once you get really going with it, and give the flour a chance to absorb moisture and the glutens to start to build up, then it'll get less sticky. But you can see it's starting to pull the sticky dough off my fingers. That is a nice dough. I really like the feel of that. A little bit sticky, but not bad. And that's what I like when it comes to bread dough. A little bit of stickiness. I did put some flour on the side in case I needed to add some more flour if it was too sticky. But this does not need it. This has a really nice consistency. In the meanwhile, I've had the other piece of dough kneading inside of the stand mixer using a dough hook. Okay, so there's my dough. I have in the meantime greased a couple of bowls with butter. I'm going to put those in there. Oh, and I want to um, just lightly coat the top with a little bit of fat. There, that's good enough there. So that's my dark dough. This, from my stand mixer, is my light dough. And again, that's a nice texture. No problems at all with that. Put that in a buttered bowl. And again, cover the top with a little bit of fat. So there's one. Check this one. This one looks fine. Now, I'm going to cover these two with plastic wrap and let them rise until they've pretty much doubled in bulk. That's going to take anywhere from an hour to two hours. My kitchen is kind of warm today because it's kind of warm here in Southern California. So I'm expecting this, these will probably double in about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Here are my two bread doughs. You can see they've risen nicely. This one looks higher, but I think that's because it's in a smaller an hour or a bowl. What I need to do next is punch these down, divide these in half, and then shape them into my two loaves. So, see how quickly that punches down. And let's see, get a knife out. Cut that roughly in half. Return that to the bowl. And what I want to do is I want to shape loaves to fit my bread pans. These are what I'm calling my bread pans. They're glass loaf dishes. And I want to shape these roughly into a rectangle. They don't have to be perfect, but I'm looking for a width that'll about match the length of my dish there. I 
and you can see how that pulls back. And that's because of the elasticity and that's the gluten. All right, I'm going to set this one aside and do the other one. Same thing. Punch that down. Set that one aside, cover it with plastic, and then start shaping. This has a firmer texture to it, and that's probably because of the texture of the rye, because it has the bran in it, whereas the other is all wheat flour. It does have the bran from the whole wheat flour, but it's got a softer texture to it. This will hold a shape better. Now, depending upon which color you want on the outside, put the, that particular dough on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this loaf. I'm going to do one of each. I'm going to make this loaf with the lighter dough on the outside. So I'm going to put my darker dough on top and then roll this up, pressing it together. When you get to the end, pinch it at the seam to hold it in place. And you can pinch these ends together. Oh, they're not going to matter too much because they're going to expand in the dish. So there's my dough. There's my glass dish. I need to grease my dish next. I'm using these baking pans because I want loaves of bread that I can slice and use for sandwiches. You don't have to use baking dishes like these. You could just shape the loaves and then place them on a baking sheet and you'll end up with rounded loaves, which is fine. So there's my dish greased. I'm looking for my seam. I want to put this in seam side down. Tuck that in nicely. And then again with my butter, I want to pat the top of this and just coat it lightly with butter. And then I'm going to cover this with plastic and let this rise. With that last rise taking a little over an hour, I anticipate this second rise will take about 45 minutes. So now I have my other loaf to do. I'll let these rise and then they'll be ready to go into the oven. So here are my loaves now. These have been rising again for almost an hour. It took that long to get the kind of rise that I like. For my second rise, I want to see the, ro the loaves shaped just about how I would like them to look when they're finished. I want you to see a couple things. Look at the tearing over here and over here. That's because this darker rye is less stretchy than the whole wheat dough. One thing I am going to do before I put these in the oven. Oh, and by the way, I'm heating my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 191 degrees Celsius. I'm going to bake these loaves for 40 to 45 minutes. They should be done. I like to use a digital thermometer to check that the loaf is done. I'd like to see an internal temperature of 190 degrees Fahrenheit or a little bit higher. That's 88 degrees Celsius. I am going to slit the top though, especially of this loaf. This is going to give me like a vent to allow for some added expansion. When these go into the oven, they're going to do quite a bit 
I shouldn't say quite a bit, a little bit more rising. That's called oven spring. As far as what causes that oven spring, it's the yeast getting active for a few more minutes and then the gas is expanding. After about 10 or 15 minutes in the oven, the dough is going to build up a hard crust on the outside like an exoskeleton and that will prevent any more rising, any more of that oven spring. So you cut this vent in the top to give it some room for some expansion. So here are my loaves now, fresh from the oven. These baked for 45 minutes. I got an internal temperature of up above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's well above the 190 degrees Fahrenheit, 88 degrees Celsius that I was looking for. I'm taking these out of the glass bread pans. I'm going to tell you this much. If you put the rye bread on the outside, it's rather difficult to get out of the glass dish. But this, with the whole wheat bread on the outside, it just pops right out. So this rye loaf is stickier on the outside, whereas this one popped out real easily. The hardest part of baking bread from scratch is waiting for the loaves to cool. The, the kitchen has that aroma of baking bread. You want to just slice off some hot bread, slather it with butter, and enjoy the flavor of it. Yes, it tastes good, but while the dough is still hot, while the bread is still hot, the starches in there are still in a liquid, semi-liquid state, and cooling down allows those starches to solidify. If you cut into the bread too soon, you run the risk of tearing the inside of the bread, the crumbs. So find something to do and then wait for the bread to cool down completely before you slice into it. Okay, now I have to wait for these to cool thoroughly, and then I'll be able to see what they taste like. My bread is nearly cool. I'll slice it in a few minutes. But what I wanted to talk about was what I'm going to do with this bread. I'm going to make sandwiches with it. And how this all came about is a friend of mine went to Southeast Asia for four weeks and he came back with a lot of ideas about food. And one of the things that he mentioned was that he tasted this condiment that the only thing he, only way he could think of describing it as was mayonnaise flavored with harissa. This is my jar of harissa. You might see oil on the top in there. I keep oil on the top as a barrier. Harissa is, I believe it's Tunisian in origin. It's used in a lot of North African cooking. I first learned about it from my Moroccan cookbook. And there's a recipe in here. You can find recipes for harissa online on my website in the recipe archive under basics, I believe, is a recipe for harissa. And you can buy harissa in some stores. I know you can buy it online because I've seen it online. Some, in some cases, it's sold as a dry spice powder mix. I've also seen it sold as a paste. I just made up my own and I keep it in the refrigerator. So while he was describing this to me over the phone, I went to the refrigerator, I took out my harissa and I took out my mayonnaise and I mixed up some and I tasted it and it really is good. So that's what I want to do first of all. I want to show you this condiment that he found something similar to in Southeast Asia. So, I have some mayonnaise here. I'm going to put a pretty good dollop in a small bowl. And I want to put a good chunk of harissa in there. I'll add more oil to that later on. And then I want to mix this up. So there's the blend, my harissa and my mayonnaise. I'm ready to slice into this bread now. It's cooled down. I'm going to cut into the middle here. And then let's see what this looks like inside. 
there is marbled rye. That's what it's supposed to look like. You got two different colors in there. I'm going to start slicing this up and making a sandwich for myself. I have my broiler heating up in my oven because I want to well I'll show you what I what my plans are all right a couple of slices of my beautiful bread I'm going to set one of those aside I'm going to spread this with my Teresa flavored mayonnaise kind of reminds me of brown mustard and I'm going to put on this a couple of slices of pastrami and then a couple of slices of Swiss cheese I'll do it that way. And I'm going to put this under the broiler just to melt that cheese. There is my sandwich from under the broiler. I've got a little plate here. Put that on the plate. This is hot. Move that aside. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? With melted cheese on top. And there is my pastrami with Swiss on marbled rye bread. Last step is to see how good that tastes. All right, there's my sandwich. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to talk with my mouth full of sandwich. But, so let me start off by saying, just in case I can't talk, excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my sandwich. But I think I'll be okay. Mmm. Wow. See, the rye bread has that caraway seed in it which gives it even more flavor. That is good. All right, excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my sandwich. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.